Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this, your Cancer February 2023 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant. And if you would be interested in having a one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant experience with me from wherever you live in the world, just check out the information that's in the description. Have a look at the website anyway. I think you'll find some quite intriguing information there that you will find interesting. Now, as the subscribers and much love and affection to the subscribers always. As the subscribers know, there are no video advertisements breaking into this content, so you get to enjoy the experience uninterrupted. But now, let us take five cards, shall we? Because as the subscribers know, five is all we need, because they speak. There's the lovers, they speak um, volumes to us. They speak volumes to us. The Nine of Swords. The lovers in the Nine of Swords. I wonder what that means. Of course, it's uh, Valentine's Day, isn't it? There's the Three of Pentacles. Valentine's Day in the 14th. Saint Valentine's Day. And if you don't have anyone to celebrate it with, get yourself a nice bottle of wine or champagne and celebrate it with yourself. That's what I'll be doing, probably. We shall see. There's the world. And let's see what there is here. There is one more to go. What's it going to be? <laughs> come out, come out, whomever you are. And there is the three of wands. Well, why don't you come sit down here next to me? We'll have a good close look at the imagery on these cards. Together, will I do the reading for you? Now, there is a, um, a Nine of Swords, which is so at odds with the rest of these things that we are obviously supposed to talk about it, because it's come up, hasn't it? And it's as if resigned and unable to know what to do. They watch the dawn in silence. Now, astrologically, in this position here, above this Three of Wands, incidentally, this is Mars ruling the second decan of Gemini, which is that first to the 11th of June. Now, the one-pointed nature of Mars does not sit well with the scattered energy of Gemini. And we also have, with this nine here, for me, a mystical association with that of the moon. And so about things which are coming in deep beneath you, things that are talking about um, things that lie beneath the surface in your subconscious, maybe things that have come from childhood. And this number nine here also has a loop attached to it. See, nine always comes back to nine. If you multiply any number by nine and break down the result, you'll end up with nine. Like nine threes are 27, two and seven are nine. Nine fives are 45, four and five are nine, and so on. You can do that with any number. And this loop within the suit of swords can lead to a negative thought loop. And it can come out in emotional and mental distress, I suppose. So let's talk about this. And I would say that you Excuse me while I just bash that into my head. Sometimes you just have to believe in yourself. There is a good chance that all you have ever been told or made to feel in your life so far is that you can't do anything. That every time you even dared to dream that your life could be better, you were shot down or laughed at, made to feel small, made to feel useless, made to feel like an idiot for even thinking you could be more. See, this is very much about cruel self-talk that's here. Well, all of us, just as we thought something was in reach, have had a massive shadow of doubt thrown upon us. And normally by someone close to us. And it hurts, yeah, doesn't it? 
And then you thought of the pain to get what you want and your brain avoids it. But you do come out of it because you make a decision, I can see, which is going to sort this. But let's continue this theme. And it is that, look, maybe something has happened to you which has affected you in a way, or you might be having things, and this could have been from the long past, you know. But understand this with respect, that sometimes horrible things happen to good people. Life isn't fair and it can be heart-wrenching. It isn't fair for animals either, is it? And can be heart-wrenching. And if you're having one, but it can also be very fair as well, and it can be great, but there, you can't have the light without the dark. But if you are having one of those dark days, it's okay. It's okay to feel that darkness. When challenges come back to back to back and it seems like something is after you, something is attacking you, something is attacking your journey, look for the lesson in it all. You grow through what you've gone through. And the question is, are you willing to go through it? When those bad things happen, what are you going to do? Are you going to allow this horrible situation to dictate the way you feel and how you handle it? Are you going to fall over, fall down, fall apart? Or are you going to face this issue with courage and resolution? You know darkness. You've seen it before. So embrace it. Embrace the darkness. Don't look away from it. Own it. Walk one step after another. Never surrender. Remember that even the most, in the most wretched of times, don't pause. Remember not to stop. Remember not to hesitate. Take that first step and start walking. Always hold your head high and let your spirit rise. You are a child of the divine and the divine is with you at all times. And don't allow yourself a switch off button. I know there is always an answer. Give it to God and it will come back in some form or another within a day or two. No matter how dark that place may be, there is always a way out. Keep going. Hold on to that fundamental quality of faith. Have faith and know that on the other side of your pain is something good. And understand that you are loved simply because you are the way you are. Always remember that you are loved. And speaking of love, let's have a look at the lovers. Now, what do we have here? Well, two souls shining brightly of their own accord. They come together in a moment of destiny. Now, in this instant, time and space seem frozen and the universe is set ablaze. The lovers embrace this point and each other with powerful abandon. Pushed from their mind is the fear of letting go, as is the knowledge that such complete surrendering of inhibitions will result in choices to be made, decisions to be made. Now, outside of this moment, neither stands unchanged. For the price of an instant of perfection is sacrifice and transformation. Now, whether this uh, alteration is one of triumph or doom cannot be determined until you have felt the fire and once consumed by the flames, as you know, it is too late to go back. Now, you know that themes about love, and we were just talking about love there as well, but the themes can be found in several cards in the Tarot, but as the primary love card in the Major Arcana, the lovers represents the most developed expression of love. I say, 
It is love in its highest frequency. It is the higher point of view or higher state of consciousness that comes when your heart has been transformed by love. Now, this card is the meeting ground between human and divine love. It is where the human love jumps up a rung on the ladder and becomes more universal and unlimited, more like divine love in a way, and where your spiritual sensitivities start to enrich your relationships with others. Now, love is about merging. It is not about union. Of course, from the non-dual non perspective, where everything is one in spirit, union doesn't make much sense. There are no separate parts to be joined. But from our usual perspective here on this earth plane, this is how we experience it, to become one. Now, this experience of union is central to both making love and to contemplative and mystical forms of spiritual practice. We let go of our separate self and merge with the being. Now, although human love relationships can become the context for merging, we often don't take them to the fullest level. Our focus is usually our human beloved and safeguarding that relationship. We hold on to the other as the source of love, forgetting that it is, well, you can forget that it is your love that is so intoxicating. You must understand to love yourself, because if you don't love yourself, you don't know the value of what it is that you are giving away, and you can't assess the value of what someone is offering to you. Now, if, if, if we can claim that love as a capacity of our own heart, we'll be less likely to get fixated on our attachment to particular other people. And then relationship changes don't necessarily have the traumatic impact that they very often do. Because it is no longer just the love object that evokes our love. Rather, our heart continuously spills over with love. You become more compassionate, more accessible, more easily touched. Now your heart is soft and tender. Sometimes it is said that, that the heart is broken open so that the whole world can be placed in it. But I did say that there was a decision involved here, and there is, and I think that you're going to be looking at all angles before making a decision. You need to look at harmony in relationships, but I do think that there is a need to make a major life choice on the direction ahead of you. Now, I also think that it could very well be a mutual sexual attraction and a sexual connection going on here. But this is not a one night stand as this is a major arcana card. And so I think it's going to have some, um, some time to run. This is also an energy that talks about the reconciliation of opposites. I call this card the children of the voice divine, the oracle of the mighty gods. I think though that you will become conscious through relationship at this time and almost at a crossroads with respect to something. You could be going into a, into a project or business with somebody else, I'm thinking. You might find that you are falling in love, but there's a great degree of commitment here as well. Now for someone here, you might find that you are choosing between two lovers, but you might find that you are unable to make that choice. Now, nothing is wrong as long as it doesn't harm other people. I think that this card here can indicate a wonderful and exciting love relationship. Now, this could be something which is current that you have, or it could be something that's new coming in. Because current relationships 
Look, I'll give you the bad as well as the good. The good is that they can deepen. Uh, the bad is that some of them can end. Now, this is not just, this doesn't relate to romantic uh, love relationships, but it could refer to business relationships, customer relationships, supplier relationships. There are new methods for personal growth and integration of your own opposing aspects now. And they're coming to forth here. Actually, ask yourself, what do you seek in the people that you love? And what comprises a fulfilling relationship for you? Say this, I enjoy working with people of all ages. I have inherent people skills. I am emotionally sure about what I need or don't need or what I want or don't want in a relationship. And I am now ready for the person I have always longed to meet. Now, what's sitting underneath that uh, lover's card? It's this card of the world. On the same line as the three of wands. So, I would say that what this is talking about, well, this is the great one of the night time, notwithstanding the daytime aspect to it, although you can see dusk approaching in the thing. But this is talking about the completion of a project or the completion of something. Something is finishing. Something is being finished off. Your efforts are finally paying off. It's, it has been a long, hard haul for you, but I think you are just on the tip of getting there. And it's also a reminder to finish what you have started. And I think very much is the case that you will be learning to take control of your own destiny and you'll be using the power of your will to get results. I think there is travel, perhaps, around here. Certainly a lot of burning off of karma. I think now you see the world and yourself as it really is. All the garments and masks, this is probably after this Nine of Swords thing here, which you get out of and there's great success around you. And you get over this speed bump, this road bump. You know, all the clothing and masks that you've had have become superfluous and useless because you are at one with your original nature. You are sort of whirling caught up in the perpetual dancing motion of the universe and the boundaries of your small eye dissolve in orgasmic union with the universe. I think you'll be very gifted as being someone who can at the same time complete the old and start the new and you'll be able to bring change into institutions or structured environments. You may find that you are quite ecologically minded and you'll have a desire to experience as much of the world and its people as is possible. It's now possible for you to see things as they really are. The stage is set now for a new beginning or a favorable completion. The events in your life have come into harmony with the universe. And maybe ask yourself this, from what aspects of your life is it time to free yourself? Is there a journey or an enterprise waiting for you to set in motion? Trust your perceptions and make a list of all unfinished situations whose resolution would give you a sense of relief. Say to yourself, I love to travel. I love to explore the unknown. I am excited about bringing ideas and creative projects into form. I deeply value making a contribution that makes the people and environment around me a better place. And I am at one with the universe. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that, oh, why don't we look at the card that's underneath it, which is this three. Oh, you've got a couple of threes. I love the number three. Let's have a look. Well, before the gods, everything stood still. Like this is Mars in the second decan of Capricorn, the 3rd to the 12th of January. Now Mars is bringing you energy, assertion and vitality. And Capricorn is infusing you with ambition 
practicality and the ability to make things tangible. Now, Mars in Capricorn, this is really good because Mars is also exalted in Capricorn. And so the energy of Mars is very constructive in this scenario in Capricorn, rather than being its often destructive self. Now, Capricorn's materialism benefits from the energy and the activity of Mars. So this energy here signifies that investing time and effort in work, however broadly you want to define that, is going to turn out favorably for you. So there's a gradual progress here. And a duty to yourself is what I think you'll, you'll have. And certainly high self-confidence. Now, this does speak of a new job or a, and, and of career satisfaction and, and of doing a good job and, and of continued progression, productivity, teamwork, consulting with others, maybe getting outside uh, helps. The, the clouds of uncertainty may have repeatedly blurred your clear vision of your goal, but your unshakable affirmation of the work that you have begun now gives you the power to overcome any temporary doubts. And this assures your gradual progress. Yeah, so I see that there's going to be reward for you, reward for your hard work and for your dedication. And your skills and knowledge are going to move, your, move you forward. This is a great energy for career or business things or even for practical matters around the home in general. Life is generally in balance for you now, and you reap the rewards of a balanced life. You'll have a great ability to stick with things and overcome obstacles. And, and you'll live with the wind in your sails. Now, some situation, I think, is demanding your readiness to work steadily. So engage yourself totally. It's worth it. Uh, what areas of do you still hold yourself back? In which areas could you be giving more of your energies? Find out and remain aware of what you want to set your full energies towards achieving and say this to yourself. I am now ready to give everything and to receive everything. And you certainly do get things moving along because here you've got this three of wands. Now, let me see. Lovers, three pentacles, three wands with the world in the bottom right corner. That would make this, I think, the sun in the second decan of Aries, the 31st of March till the 9th of April. This is about birth, creation, manifestation. The sun in Aries. Well, the sun is also exalted in Aries. And so this planetary placement is very favorable. Now, Aries, as you know, enjoys a challenge. They're the pioneers, the explorers. And Aries' sons are happiest when their lives are moving forward. So I think what we have here for you is a great degree of self-confidence. And I don't think you'll be making any compromises. There are ideas crystallizing. And this is confirmation that you are on the right path could be business expansion. And I do get the idea that if there's, maybe you're thinking about whether or not a hobby could be turned into a side hustle or into a, or into a business. You perceive and allow your own power free play now, never giving it over to someone else in an attitude of subjugation. Now, despite external dynamism, your center remains untouched and clear. You have a direction in your life now and you know where you need to apply your effort in order for you to be the best and of service to people around you. Now, it's important for you to operate from a place of integrity before making decisions at the moment and to have clarity of mind and heart before action in order to bring about the best result. And unless you do have that clarity, then don't act. But if you do, then now is the perfect time to undertake projects and to get things done. You will be successful. Now pay attention to your own point 
and internal stillness? Center yourself and overcome. Are there any reasons for self-doubt? No, this is banished. Do you yet doubt your virtues and abilities? No, you do not. You've overcome that. And if you are not centered and feel doubts lingering, these have been burnt away now by this fire card sitting underneath it. And the, the airy card of uh, Gemini has pushed uh, this away. Then you say to yourself this, that I have the power, confidence, intellect, ability to reflect and know, to know what I want and to go out there and get what I deserve. Well, what a particularly interesting set of cards for you. Good job, you. Gee, that was uh, very, very interesting, I thought. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed providing it to you. And I, uh, yeah, some great things happening for you this month. Some great things. And don't you deserve it. Now, of course, until I see you again, remember one thing and one thing only. And it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.